Joined now by the great one, the Hall of Famer, Mike DeCourcy. How are you, sir? I am well, Jim. How are you? Uh, great, man. It's uh, Basketball is fun right now. The Big Ten is absolutely amazing. Um, and I, I was, we were, I was just talking about it, how I, I don't know who's going to do what because there's such a log jam in the middle of the conference that it's going to take a minute for that to separate out. But there's four teams uh, at four and four right now. Uh, you've got Michigan State, Wisconsin, Mich Michigan is tied for second in the conference, and they're 77th in the net rankings. So it is a, a complete – uh, mixture of, of teams in this in this league, and I think that, and this is going to sound crazy, and you would know better than anybody, but I think that there are ten potential NCAA tournament teams in this league. I don't know how that will wash out at the end for that last team with record wise, um, but it looks like potentially that's there. So you're saying you think they can get ten? Is that what you're saying? It, 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 they could. It depends on how it washes out. Yeah, um, I, I don't think they'll get ten. I, I don't. I think, think it. I think it ends up being nine. Yes. Um, I pretty. I feel pretty it strongly. Is. It would take. It would take a a real, almost. You know, a, a, a. I don't like use the word miracle. Um, but it would. It would take an uncommon, unlikely convergence of events to get ten in this. Particular it would take a lot of balance. They they would have to stay balanced all the way through, and that usually doesn't happen. But the problem with the balance is that it there are certain Watch. teams that can't that can't support the balance, so to speak, with their non. -conference. Michigan, Michigan is a perfect Michigan example. They're the second in the Big Ten, and they're seventy seven in the net rankings right now. Yeah, and and it you know there are teams down there, Wake Forest being one that have done enough to be ballpark NCAA tournament teams, even though they're deep in the net. But Michigan's not one of those at this point. Now, there's lots of opportunity for everybody in the conference, with the exception of Minnesota and probably Nebraska, to make it. I mean, Nebraska would have to tear through February in a way that they have not demonstrated they're capable of doing. It's, it's there if they could, but it's not likely. But everybody else just has to perform in some way. Uh, Michigan, again, would have to perform very well, but they have a five-game stretch. Uh, and I think they're – I'm sorry, I believe it's a seven-game stretch where they have five at home, something like that. I'd have to – I mentioned it on uh, Big Ten and Beyond the other night. They have a really important stretch of games. Michigan's uh, NCAA tournament resume – uh, will be more or less determined in the next couple of weeks. And I'll, I'll give you what they've got now. Uh, they go, they have Purdue at home. Then they go to Penn State and Northwestern. Then they play Ohio State at home. Then they have Nebraska and Indiana, uh, and uh, Nebraska and Indiana at home. They have a three-game home, home stand there. Uh, so, uh, so it's six games now. That was including Minnesota. They had five out of seven at home, the which includes the number one team in the country, which it, the home games include the number one team in the country and two NCAA tournament contenders. The road games are both against NCAA tournament contenders that are in their weight class, let's say. that it's not, it's not a question of you or them now, and it probably won't ever be in terms of like, oh, you know, you get to the end of the year and, and, and you knock somebody off and they're out and you're in it. Sometimes that happens. I call it an elimination game. We saw that with IU at Ohio state was that was one of Arch's first years. Uh, yep. in the Big Ten yep. tournament. Can't remember yep. what year, 17, 18, somewhere in there. Um, uh, and yeah. so you get those, it's too early for those now, but you, it helps you because you climb, they fall, you inflict the loss on Northwestern, Michigan gets to climb. Northwestern takes a ding. Same with Penn State. So there, it does help to beat those teams that are, you know, that are in that ballpark. And one of the things I was talking about earlier too, explaining that I know I'm sure Hoosier fans are up in arms because Indiana's not in the top 25 again. And and I explained that pollsters are not voting on these three games that they've seen, they, they, they're they voting on a little bit more of a body of work and they're waiting for them to prove that 
this three games is is where they're back to um, because those those three losses are still in, in people's minds, especially when you give up 21 points and things like that. Although they're playing, they're playing like a top 15 team right now, but they have to m- maintain that and sustain that. Uh, I I think this team could end up with a five game winning streak in the Big Ten, which is something they haven't had for a long time. The schedule plays out for them to win four in a row. They go to Minnesota, which is a game that they should win uh, against a one in Min- a seven Minnesota team, and then you come back home against an Ohio State team that has probably been one of the most inconsistent teams in the Big Ten, uh, and you have them at home. So that. Indiana could be potentially looking at a five-game Big Ten winning streak all of a sudden, which would be a big boost for them and their uh, seed hopes at the end of the year. Oh, absolutely. One thing, as a public service, please, you have me on every week. If I can tell IU fans one thing, if don't waste a minute of your energy, of your time and energy on worrying about the rankings. They're, they are such a waste of time. They don't mean anything. The 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 pe- when when uh, when the nine people ten people get into the room along with the great NCAA support staff led by David Warlock and company when they get in that room to make the selections for the NCAA tournament the AP poll will not be in the room it will not be on the team sheets if somebody asks for it the staff will get it for them because that's what that's what they're there to do. If somebody, but they'll, but I'll tell you what, they'll probably look at him like, really? You want that? What for? Like, you know, do you need to make notes on something? We'll give you a blank sheet of paper. That's how valuable it is. Um, it, it doesn't mean anything. So, and it does, and it doesn't matter if you're talking about the AP poll or the coaches poll. No, it doesn't matter. Polls don't mean anything in what matters, which is win your league or compete for your conference championship, uh, play for your, you know, your conference tournament championship and then getting the NCAAs with the best possible seed. Those things are what matters in a college basketball season. And the poll itself, it, it doesn't mean anything. I am astonished that my colleagues continue to, to, to participate. I don't understand why any of them does it. I, I did it in 90 and 91, or I think it was 90 and 91, I think I did it. And... What you know, and I put time and effort, and it takes a lot of work, and they don't pay you for that work either. It just you know, you just get your name on the you know, uh, the sheet or whatever if somebody asks for it. Um, you take all that time and effort, and and then like after I did it for a couple of years, they took my vote away because it was the other guy's turn, and I'm like, well, what if he doesn't know as much about basketball as I do? Doesn't matter, it's his turn, so like that was it. I never, I said. I'm never doing this again. I will never, and, and I've been asked once or twice since, and I've declined, and I will never vote for the AP poll again. It's a complete waste of time. So if you want to look at it because, it, you know, it kills a minute, that's fine. But don't get upset about it because it doesn't mean anything. No, because the one thing you just hit on is the time that you put in. There are people that do not put that time in. Uh, they're, they're just, uh, there are just, there have been, instances where we know that and and i'm not saying on the ap side but on the coaches side where they had somebody else do it for them Uh, just hey fill that in uh so we don't know the time they're putting in and all that so again that's why the rankings don't really mean jack uh because the team will be number one today and lose tonight and it just it doesn't matter I, i will tell you this when purdue lost to rutgers for instance at the end of that week they still had the best record in college basketball uh houston had not played nearly the challenging schedule that the boilers had to this point uh and so and 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 so i said on beyond i said look if they win i you know they or maybe it was uh the pregame show um that day I, i can't remember who they were playing i said look if they win this game i think it was penn state but i'm not sure if they win this game they should still be number one but they won't be because you have to get punished for losing and that's one of the things that you can say about my bracket or Jerry Palms or whomever's um, is that you don't get punished. There's like no retribution. You, sometimes it affects your standing um, relative to the other teams. But like I was going to have Kansas still as a one seed to, for today's bracket. I would still have had them if they had won at, if they had won at, at Baylor last night. Um, 
even though they lost on Saturday. They don't have to be punished for that. There has to be a team more qualified than them to knock them off that line, and their qualifications have changed because of the loss. But they, but they don't have to – but the, in the polls, you have to be punished. That's how it works. I agree. Uh, Fred asked, will Kentucky and or and Duke make the tournament this year? Both having a – Kentucky's having a little bit better go of it, I guess. But uh, Oh, no, Duke's having a better go of it. Uh, Kentucky's got a lot <laughs> further to dig out. Um, Duke, Duke will make it unless they collapse, and I don't think they'll collapse. Uh, they've got to – if they want to be in a good seed, they got to start winning road games. Um, and last night was an opportunity against a team that was at the bottom of their league. Not a bad team. Uh, Virginia Tech was a tournament-bound team at one point before they started losing ACC games. Uh, so I, 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 they'll they'll make it uh, unless they completely collapse. But Kentucky still has to hustle uh, because they are uh, um, you know they they are basically playing around first four last you know uh, the the last four buys that sort of thing. They're they're in that ballpark depending on where you look and. Uh, so I, I think that they, they still have to hustle and they've got the big week. They've got to go to Vanderbilt tonight. They have not been a, as reliable enough team to assume a win at, at Vandy's Memorial gym. And then they have Kansas at home on Saturday. And I think they need to get at least one of those, those team, those two games to feel comfortable. Uh, Duke. Duke losing Whitehead, uh, that could, Kenneth pointing out, that could cause problems for them as uh, the rest of their year goes. But we've seen how teams like Indiana have been able to come back around after injury. It it might take a minute, but uh, they've been able to regroup. So I'm sure Duke has a, enough talent to to regroup as well. Yeah, I I, I, I think they both have ability. Um, uh, I, I think Filipowski has been terrific for, uh, for Duke. And, and, it, it, you look at last night's game. I mean, there were there were officiating controversies in last in both of uh, in two of last night's better games. One was uh, the game, the Duke game, where uh, a Virginia Tech player whose name I don't remember now uh, scored a basket late, and it was a key basket for Virginia Tech. And, and celebrating, he turned around and struck Filipowski in in, in the facial area somewhere, uh, you know, neck or face or whatever the exact point of contact couldn't be sure but he struck him and and the refs ruled it incidental contact and i've seen similar circumstances the you know the 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 standard applied look you know i mean you may not have meant to hit him but you hit him and you got to be more in control than that uh and we i think we saw that uh uh to an extent in the in saturday's kentucky game um and but they called the they called a flagrant foul on uh I mean, they, they, they did not choose to call a flagrant foul in this circumstance, and so Duke did not get the ball and the free throws that might have won the game for them. And then uh, there, was a, there was a circumstance in the Nevada, uh, Nevada New Mexico game where a uh, tie game, New Mexico's uh, Udeze pulls down a key rebound, uh, gives his team the ball with a dozen seconds left or so to try to get a winning shot in the second overtime, and... Nevada guys surround him and start hacking at him. And they clearly fouled him at least twice. And the refs didn't call it. And in trying to evacuate that circumstance, he threw his arm out and hit another guy in the face, the guy from Nevada in the face. New Mexico made the error of calling timeout. And it gave the refs time to go back and look at it. And they, ha- and they tagged a flagrant one onto Udeze. They couldn't, the rule doesn't allow them to call the common foul, only the flagrant. I mean that's a great that's a great rule book, right? That's why I love replay. You can't call this, but you can call that, even though one happened before the other and maybe helped precipitate it. Uh, officiating in college sports, period, but especially college basketball, uh, is never going to improve until there is one group of NCAA officials. It would be better, yes, but no, they won't like do the- it. The NFL is the NFL official. The NBA has got the NBA officials. You've got to be, these guys have got to be in the same room, on the same page, on the same plan, calling things the same way. And that doesn't happen. You've got six different conferences, more, but, and then the tournament comes around. It's, it's, then you mix all these different officials in that, that have worked together, but that group over there, it's, it's not, I, 
that's uh, something that needs to be fixed, I think. And I with all the money in this sport or in the in the going on now, how can they not fix that? It makes no sense. Well, I I I will say that there are certain refs, and I think you'll agree with this, Jim. In all three of the professional leagues you mentioned, that any of us could point to and say, "Yeah, but that guy, he's still working, man. He's still getting he's still getting run." Uh, so there's that. But I agree that. Uh, a centralized officiating for college basketball or college football would be a much better operation. But I don't think you'll ever see that. It would accord more power to the central body, the NCAA, and I don't think the conferences, any of the conferences want that. Uh, I think they like having control over their own officials. Uh, exactly what the value of that is, I'm not really, I'm not sure that I've ever been able to ascertain that in 40 years in the business. Um, but they do prefer it. So I don't think we'll ever see, other than for the postseason, I don't think we'll ever see uh, a uh, a centralized body of officials that, you know, the, the NCAA sets the rules. They, they, they make, you know, they make the assignments for the postseason tournament and that's it. Uh, the, and they, and they do try to help uh, with the, they sent out the, the, NCAA coordinator of officials sends out video packets weekly. Here's here's what happened in this game. Here's probably how it's, you know, here's how it should have been officiated. Here's how it was officiated. Uh, they do that to try to help officials do the best job. They they do it. Uh, I know they work hard to try to improve it. Uh, you know, I know John Adams here in Indy, good friend, uh, who was the NCAA's coordinator of officials for uh, about about a decade ballpark and did a wonderful job and uh, and I, so I know that uh, I know how hard he worked and that, and to an, that it, idea actually came from John in my conversation with John yeah yeah it it, it 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 would be better there's no doubt it would be better but I just don't think that you'll get the conferences to go along with that just as they declined all those years to go along with the idea of a football championship until finally they decided to build one of their own. 